Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I digitize the embroidered patch for my Sally ball gown. To start out, I'm using the Floriani Total Control U software to digitize, and I've never used any other software before, so I won't be able to answer questions about other software. I created the JPEG of my design in Illustrator, and you can actually download that JPEG below for free to play with and try to digitize yourself. I also have the file I created for this patch available to purchase, again, linked below. If you would like to learn how I made the rest of the ball gown, I will also link those videos below. And now let's jump into the tutorial. The first thing to do is go to the wizard hat icon and click on it and choose the auto digitizing option. Select the image to digitize, mine is called Sally Patch JPEG, and then click next. Pick the size the final embroidery design is going to be. Mine is about three inches. At this time, you can click transform and play with orientation of the design, but I don't need to do that, so I'm gonna hit next. Now you can see which colors it will stitch out in. At this time, you can edit your image. If you want to change the color by clicking edit image, it will bring you to paint. I don't need to do this because I made it how I wanted it to look in Illustrate, so I'm going to click next. Next, you can change the tolerance. I keep mine at 15 because I'm gonna be making some changes in just a minute, so I'm gonna hit next once again. For this last prompt, I pick, I pick minimize jump because I do have a seven needle embroidery machine, so I don't have to worry about changing the thread color. If you're working on a regular embroidery machine that only has one needle, don't choose that. <laughs> I also pick always lock stitch and never trim and then hit finish. And now we get to play with our design. So the first thing I like to do is go over to 3D over on the left, and um, I like to see like how that's gonna look when it's stitched out. Um, this also helps when we go play with the types of stitches we want here in a few minutes. So the first thing that I actually have to do for the purpose of this, uh, like stitching this out, is actually take this outer edge here that you see, and um, I'm gonna drag it down to be the last thing that stitches out. The reason is I wanna make a satin stitch. I, like, I wanna turn this into a satin stitch. Um, so I want it to be the last thing that stitches out. Um, I also want to get rid of these X's that you see here. These are my like stitch marks. So to do this, I am just going to go in and take um, my uh, arrow tool that controls my um, stitch design. And I'm going to actually delete a bunch of these. If you're familiar with uh, Adobe Illustrate, this is super easy. This basically works like the pen tool. So I'm going to delete a bunch of these um, marks and then these points essentially. And then what I'll end up doing is um, adjusting it to where it's a straight line. So you can use your handles just like you do in Illustrate to adjust the line and the curve of the line. Um, and you see right here how that's curved. We're just gonna go in and adjust the handle. Um, and then uh, once these are to my liking, we're actually going to move on to the yellow bit, which is um, the in the middle of everything. So we're gonna actually take all of this. If you see, this is the outline from it before and we're gonna once again delete these so that it will connect the two lines together and then we will use our little handlebar to make that curve just a bit more straight. We don't really wanna curve there at all and we wanna try to get these to overlap. So I took those out because we're actually gonna make two more and place them in the end. Um, this is because um, I want of the way I want it to stitch out and you'll see at the end like why I do this. I'm going to repeat this process at the stitch mark on the bottom and I'm gonna show you this through a time lapse. So now I'm going to take and make this outline stitch last by just dragging and dropping this piece to the very bottom of my order here on the right. 
Now we're going to actually take and duplicate this cross stitch here. Um, and to do this, I am basically going to drop down this um, middle section and click on only this and just literally copy and paste. Once I've done that, I will have one basically right underneath it and I can click on it and move it around wherever I want. I want it to stitch out absolutely last, so I will also have it go all the way to the bottom of this screen. I can also play with the orientation of it. So I can make it, I can change the angle of it. I can move it around a little bit, kind of do it exactly however I want it to look. Uh, and then um, since I didn't like how it looked going underneath this last stitch, I do end up moving it down to the bottom, but I copy and paste um, my uh, cross again and move it to that bottom location that we had it. So you can see. So for the yellow part of the patch, I'm going to play around with my fill stitch. Basically what that means is um, I'm going to go down to the bottom and click fill motif and then I'm going to go to the top and click properties and I'm going to play with how it like the design that it stitches out in. Um, so what I do is I actually just go through the drop down menu of the fill pieces like the fill stitches and I click apply to the ones that I think look good and eventually I come upon the one that I want to use for this and um, I go from there you can also pick how close it is together and how wide it is apart um, these are all just in the properties box and you can play with them to your heart desire just make sure you hit that apply button every single time you make a change otherwise you won't actually see what it is um, so yeah Now that I picked out the design or fill that I would like for my yellow, I need to go in and play around with these dots. So basically what I, or circles, basically what I do is I select all three of them and not actually the crosses. And I decide, do I want it to be a fill stitch or a satin stitch? Um, and again, I do this by just kind of playing with the types of stitches it can have. So I, I click on satin, I see how that's gonna look. I click on fill um, and I think eventually I go with a fill stitch for the um, for the little circles. I lied, I chose a fill stitch, but then I basically do the same exact thing with the little crosses as I'll click on all of them and I will make sure that they're the fill I want. I, they, I didn't end up actually changing them because I liked how they looked. Um, the last step before we can actually stitch this out and see what it's gonna look like is to click on that outer border and that I know for a fact I want as a satin stitch. So I'm gonna turn this into a satin stitch and basically what I need to do is decide how wide I want my stitch and how close I want my stitch together. And again, that's gonna be up in the properties panel and um, I hit apply between every time and I like to kind of zoom in and to see how it's gonna look and make sure that it actually looks satiny. And then if you turn the 3D off, you'll also get to see if it um, lines up with your other pattern, the yellow. The goal is to have everything slightly overlap so it looks like one cohesive unit. So once I've done all of that, I will save it and then export it and bring it up on my sewing machine and stitch it out, embroidery machine and stitch it out. Something I forgot to mention is that the um, Floriani software actually suggests what kind of stabilizer you should use and what kind of needle you should use, which I think is so helpful based on the fabric that you're using and uh, the, the design itself. So I'm just going to be doing my practice one on cotton. I'm using the Floriani. Uh, uh, this is a fusible stabilizer that they have. And um, I'm stitching this out on my seven needle machine. So I did get footage of me 
so I did take footage of it stitching out, but my camera died in the middle of it. And I didn't know that my when my camera dies, you lose the footage it was filming. I don't think it's done that previously because I have had that happen a couple times. But anyway, we don't have that. But you get to see me iron this and hoop it. And then I'll show you how it stitched out for the first one and what adjustments I make so that like, yeah, you can get the picture. So what I learned from stitching it out besides the little bobbin issue I had um, in that top circle is um, that these circles don't actually overlap the yellow. Um, and then also the outer area is a little thinner than I had hoped. So we're gonna make that wider. Um, yeah, that's the changes we're gonna make and I'll show you how I make them. The first adjustment I'm going to make is with the circles. I'm literally just gonna click on each one and make it a little bit bigger uh, and then move it back to the center so that it is centered with itself. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the cross stitch, just make it a tiny bit bigger, realign it back to the center of it, and then it should overlap all of my yellow spaces. Um, so they're all basically overlapping each other now. Then I'm just gonna go in on the yellow portion and move a few of these lines around once again so that the yellow will just connect um, and uh, go into the black bits. You can see me doing this in here. Um, and by zooming in too, I will physically be able to see where these gaps are so it's easier to correct. For the satin stitch, I just make the stitch a little bit wider, a little bit longer, and then I also increase the density just to make it a tiny bit wider. And that's all the adjustments I make. So here's how it turned out the second go around, and I love this so much better. The only adjustment I actually ended up making was instead of stitching it out on white, I thought it just would look better and cleaner to stitch it out on black fabric. So let's go to that shot. And there it is on my black fabric. I just used some scrap cotton sateen left over from her skirt. I'm going to use the wrong scissors to trim these threads. Don't know why I chose those scissors. I think I realized it. Yeah, I did realize it. I'm gonna use my thread <laughs> trimming scissors to uh, trim all these threads. I'll flip it over and do the same. And then I will cut this out using those first ones, the duckbill ones. And now that they're all cleaned up and cut out, we are just going to press this down. We just really wanna use the heat to kind of solidify the stitches in place. Um, and I actually end up hand stitching this onto Sally's gown. I do add some rhinestones to it as well. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I will be reviewing the final look with a get ready with me on Saturday at 12 p.m. EST so stay tuned for that. If you like my content please subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you guys in a couple of days. Happy sewing!